Very good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you for joining in for the second webinar of X10AV. Uh, this webinar, we're going to talk about how to use the questionnaire method for meeting room, HUD room, and classroom design. My name is Vip Singh. I'm the co-founder of X10AV. On the panel, I also have my co-founder, Sahil, who is also uh, uh, who's also on the webinar along with us. So we'll just wait a couple of more minutes before we start. So this is our design page, as you can see. So there are six tabs on the top. So there is general, there is video, there is audio, control, bill of material, and calculations. And so general is basically yeah, the basic information about the room, like the room dimensions, the seating capacity, seating pattern, passive video sources, and an optional VGA. Then video, audio, and control are basically questions related to video, audio, and control components in a type of a room. And then uh, bill of material is where you will be able to see all the products which you pick and choose as suggested by our algorithms. And then calculations is basically uh, the specifications calculated by our algorithms for each individual component. So these specifications are calculated based on the inputs which you provide in the, uh, in the questionnaire. So also on top here, you will see a couple of breadcrumbs. So which is basically the first one here, which is a clickable link, is the project in which you're working on. So webinar two is the project which I'm working on. Then extend AV webinar is basically the name of the design which I'm working on. If you click on this, it will uh, take you to the design page where you can see all the documents, but it will not make sense to go on this page till you have completed all the sections and hit generate design. We'll come on to that later. And then we have a meeting room. So meeting room is basically the name of the template, the design template that you're working on. So uh, let's start uh, designing our meeting rooms. Uh, so Room dimensions, so you have the ability to enter the room dimensions in feet or meters. So a lot of people in the US or everyone in the US uses uh, uh, the feet method and outside of the US, the other parts of the world, it is used in metrics. So it is, uh, so both parts of the world can have their way. So let me just enter some values. So my room length is 25 feet uh, width, is 15 and I have a height of 12 feet. Let's make it 10. Uh, seating capacity is basically, we need to know the seating capacity so that we can suggest uh, the number of microphones which you would need in your design. So let's say I have a seating capacity of uh, 14 seats and then seating pattern, again, we would need to know this uh, so as to calculate the quantity of the microphones, particularly the table microphones, if there are in the room. So let's take it as a rectangular. Now, uh, number of video sources. So here you will have to tell the system the passive video sources which you're going to use. So if you don't really know what it means, so uh, many places you have these tool tips which will guide you and give you more information. So this basically says specify the quantity of each type of video source. So let's say I have a, I have a meeting room, so I, I would have four laptops on the table for which I need to uh, provide uh, connectivity options. And then I have uh, one desktop. So here, the point to note over here is that you could leave these empty if you don't have uh, any of these in your design. So you don't need to enter zero in here if you don't have it. That's why all of these say optional. So I don't have a 
Blu-ray player. Let's put in a streaming device, which is basically a streaming device like a Roku TV or an Apple TV. So I put in the Apple TV. I don't have a document camera. And let's say I have for legacy options, for legacy laptops, I have a VGA as well. So I hit continue. So as soon as I hit continue, you will see I am taken to the next section and the previous section is marked complete. So the point to note over here is that this, will, this section will only be saved once you hit the continue button. So if you have a, if you've answered some of these parts and then you go to the video side and you have not hit continue, so it will not save your selections or your answers. So it's very important that you hit continue towards the end of each section and make sure that it says the section is complete. Okay, so I now can move on to the video section. So the first thing which uh, the system needs to know is the room orientation. We know the room dimensions which are there, but in order to calculate the right size of the display screen and an LED display, we need to know what's the last viewing person's distance from the screen for which we need to know how the room is going to be oriented. So there, that is where you have to give, uh, select this option. So let's say it's like this, hit continue. So now you will see that we have these subsections uh, which are basically individual components in a type of a room. It's very important that you complete a previous section to move on to the next section. If you try and go on to the next section without completing the previous section, it won't allow you to do that. And you will get an, uh, a notification like this. So always make sure that you have completed the previous section and it says, uh, it turns green and says complete. So now we come on to the large format display, which is basically an LED screen. So I would say yes to it. Then uh, you will see questions which are uh, based on a VIXA standard as well as functional requirements, which are in a type of a room. So if you don't know what general viewing or basic decision-making or analytical decision-making means, you can hover on the tooltip and we guide you with that information. So you will see in this section in, in the large format displays, the analytical decision-making section is green and you could not select this. The reason for that is that as per the VIXA standard, this results in a screen size of more than 100 inches most of the times and which is, and there are absolutely very few, just one or two more than 100 inches size screens available. So that's why uh, we grade it out. So uh, it will make sense to choose a project a screen if you're going above 110 inches or something like that. So let's say I want to do a general viewing for video conferencing, then placement of displays. So where do you need your display? On the front walls or on the side walls or on both? So let's say I want on both. Then I need to tell my resolution. So I say a 4K Ultra HD. Now you get the, uh, uh, the brands which are there on our platform. So right now, uh, many of you would already know that we have almost 200,000 products on our platform and 2,300 brands. Out of those, uh, we have for 50,000 products, we have the specifications and the port informations available. So I know that number is a bit small at the moment, but the good news is that uh, we are very soon going to uh, tie up with the industry's biggest database company, which is AVIQ. So you will see that our database is going to grow tenfold, and you will be able to see almost all the products with their specifications and ports information in here. Anyways, having said that, let's move on uh, with our design. So I'm going to choose NEC, Christie, and Sony, and I hit find products. So as soon as you do find products, the algorithm will tell you what, what is the ideal size for your room. And then it will also fetch all the matching displays uh, from the specifications which are uh, suggested by the algorithms and what you have chosen in your answers. 
So uh, you could view the text sheet or the web page of a particular product just by clicking on the I button. It will download the text sheet for you right over there, or it will take you to the, uh, the web page of that product. So, and you will see an MSRP pricing here, but if you have signed up as a business plan user, you could upload your price sheets and pricing and we will map those prices uh, to your account. And if you are outside of the US and you have a different cur currency, let's say a Euro or a British pound, then you'll be able to see the MSRP in your currency if you're subscribed to uh, the business plan. So let's choose an NEC display. I need one for my front wall. Then uh, it's telling me for the side wall as well. So before I choose the side walls, I would like to tell you that in each section, we have these kind of filters, which basically allow you to go against the recommendations of the algorithm. So let's say you don't agree that you would need a at 85 inches display. It's too big for you and it's too expensive for your customer. So you go inside, select size, and then you can choose a smaller range. And the algorithms will also, uh, at the same point in time, will fetch those particular products for you. So you do that. And then the same thing is for the side walls as well. I'm gonna do select this 55 inches for the side wall. And I hit uh, one quantity and click on add to box. So you'll see that both of the displays are now added to the bulk material. You go in the bulk material, you'll see that these are now added. Now, uh, important thing to note over here. Let's say you're working on a design and uh, you have gotten this far and you have hit find products. And uh, and now you have to select your product and click on add to bomb. But if you don't, if you don't do that, uh, if you don't click on add to bomb, it will not auto save your selections. So it is very important that you make sure that you hit add to bomb towards the end of each section to make sure that it is saved so that uh, if something happens like uh, your network connection breaks or some uh, or your website goes down or you go somewhere or you, you accidentally close the window. So if you have added the product in the bomb, all the answers which you had given and along with that product will be saved. So just make sure that you always do that. So I'm gonna add my display. Select the size and hit add to bomb again. Now, once you have hit add to bomb and the section says complete, this basically means that it is now saved. So the next time you come back here, both of uh, you will find this section in the same order, but you have to make sure that you hit add to bomb. Okay, so let's go ahead and select some projector screens. So I say yes to a project to screen. And uh, I wanna do basic decision making. So in project to screens, we don't have general viewing because it does not make sense to have a, a, a project to screen of 60, 70, 80 inches or 50 inches size. Basic decision making is basically reading PowerPoint, Word or Excel files, which is probably why you would need a project to screen. Or if you want to do things like analytical drawings and CAD drawings and those kind of kind of stuff, if you want to see on your screen, that is when you select analytical dec uh, decision making. So I'm going to select basic decision making. I will do on the front wall only. I select my resolution. It's a ceiling mount. And then I have to choose a screen. So I choose my brand of the screen. Uh, then if a lot of people have asked this question that if your chosen brand or your preferred make is not here, how do you proceed with that? So I would say that 
you select any particular screen make the draw uh, may make the design complete and then you could edit and change the name of that screen towards the end in the drawing as well as in your bill of material and that that is true for everything here uh in 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 the questionnaire method so uh if you don't know exactly what's the surface what the surface means so you can click on the i tool and click on learn more so this will basically take you to that particular surface from uh, the manufacturer's website and it will explain you what's the surface of the screen so why do we need to select the screen first is because in order to calculate the brightness of the projector we need to know the screen gain so that's why you have to choose a project screen first before you can uh, choose a projector so i'm going to do find products again okay so we have uh, this the number of screens are a lot that's why it takes a bit of time from our database to fetch from uh, almost 70 80 thousand screens which we have so i'm going to select the screen again it follows the same uh, wix standard but if you don't want to uh, follow the recommendation again there is an option to choose your own size or your own range of screen so I'm going to select the screen, add a quantity, hit add to bomb. Now I come on to the projector section. So again, you have an option to choose in Lux or in foot candles. Uh, by default, uh, the ambient light level should be 55 Lux. That is as per the Wix standard. But if you know what the ambient light level at the screen location is going to be, you can enter your own value. For here, I'm just gonna take the default. I need a DLP projector. I need a long throw. And if you need a HD based key con connectivity, you could say yes. I'm gonna uh, say no to this. And then again, I choose my brand. So it's multiple, it's fine products. So now uh, under projector, you will see there are two calculations which are given as per the standard. So there is a separate calculation for a lamp-based projector, and there's a separate calculation for a laser-based projector. So if you would like to filter it out, you have an option to select a subtype. If you, you, if you only want laser projectors from the, uh, from the options, you can choose a laser projector. And uh, you could also select the brightness which you need. So right now the brightness uh, suggested by the laser projector is two, five, four, six. Uh, if you want higher, you can select the brightness from this filter as well. So that flexibility is there across all the options. So you don't need to follow the recommendation. You could have your own, uh, uh, you could have your own specifications in there. So I'm going to select an NEC projector and hit add to bomb. All right, so now it's going to ask me for video conferencing. So it's a meeting room, so I'm going to say yes to video conferencing. Then the options that you get is hardware-based, software-based, both, or a packet solution. So hardware-based is your classic uh, uh, VC codecs. Software-based is basically all your, uh, uh, your software conferencing like Skype, WebEx, BlueJeans, Google Hangouts, and whatever, you know, which is being used, or, or Zoom, some things like that. And both, if you want to have a software and hardware option together, then you will have to choose both. And the package solution basically means you want to go for packages provided by different manufacturers. So like Cisco, has a lot of packages uh, like the Cisco WebEx RoomKit Plus, RoomKit Mini, all the Cisco packages you will see are in here. A lot of times what people do on our system is go under hardware-based conferencing and then uh, choose Cisco. Uh, let's say I want to do a main camera, normal license, and I do Cisco, and they do fine products. 
So here they're only gonna find the, the VC codex along with their camera kits. So if you're actually looking for a full solution with microphone, speakers, DSP, everything which, is, which comes as a package, you will have to choose a package solution. So keep that in mind every time you do that. So I'm gonna do a, uh, an example with software and hardware combined. So let's do a meeting room where I could do a software as well as a hardware conferencing. So it's asking me, do I need a USB camera for software video conferencing? I'd say yes. How many USB cameras do I need? I'd say I need one. How would you like, so uh, now it's gonna ask you, how would you like to connect your USB camera either with a laptop or a desktop? So we have a laptop and a desktop uh, uh, in our design. So I'm gonna do laptop. Now, how many main cameras required? It is basically asking you the camera required for a hardware PC codec. So we'll probably revise this language to make it more clear. Uh, I'd say one. Uh, number of multi-point licenses, I'd say none. And then I'm gonna go with Cisco, with fine products. So I'm gonna select an SX20 quick kit. And then it's asking me, how do you like to connect the outputs of the switcher? If you're using uh, for content sharing, many times you send a couple of outputs from your codec to the far side. So I'm not gonna do that, so I'll say no. Now the next thing is the USB cameras. So here are pl plenty of options, the USB cameras which are there. Uh, if you click on show more, it will keep giving you more options. It's all the options which are there on our platform. So I'm gonna go and select a QSC PTZ 12 by 72 option. The point to note over here is that uh, the accessory, which is the IO bridge, which comes along with this camera will be uh, automatically added to your bomb. So you don't need to add it separately. So I hit yes to the USB camera, and then I click on add to bomb. So now it, takes, it asks me for a wireless presentation system. I'd say yes. How many laptops require simultaneous presentation sharing, wireless presentation sharing? So this basically means uh, if there are four people in the room, are all four gonna share content on the display at the same point of time? So let's say I want two, and I can select multiple again, and I'll do AMX and Barco. So I'm gonna select a Barco presentation, wireless presentation sharing device, CSE 200. Click on add to bomb. Now it's asking me for a streaming and recording device. So this is basically uh, to record and stream your, uh, your meetings live over the internet. If you have a need, you can select that. You'll see there are all the, uh, all the options in here. It's from Polycom, Sonic Foundry. So all these things are here. So, but I will say no to this. because This is more relevant in a training or a classroom scenario. So uh, we'll continue. Uh, do you need an annotation system so that whatever you write on your screen gets shown on this big screen as well? Uh, it's more of a meeting, uh, classroom or a training room requirements. I'm gonna say no to this as well. we'll continue. Now this, uh, after you have answered all these, this brings us to the most important section uh, for us, uh, for, for an AV design, which is basically the switching and interfacing system. So as you could see here that we have all the latest technologies which you could use for your interfacing and switching systems. If there is something missing, please give us, uh, please let us know by the end of this webinar or in the chat window or send us an email at support at xtenavy.com or write to us under the feedback section. So uh, you would see we have a HD based C transmitter and receiver system, AV over IP, AVB. Normal cabling is your standard cabling. So you don't need to extend via CAT6 or CAT5 or over network. You just connect your analog cables. And again, we have the packet solutions. So packet solutions are basically a lot of these manufacturers have complete packages for the entire rooms. Like there's a training room package, there's a meeting room package, 
and uh, all different kinds of packages. So if you are looking for a package and you could not find anything up uh, before this, so you have to get into the package solution under the switching and interfacing system. So uh, let's say uh, once I hit Crestron, it will fetch all the packages uh, which are sold as a bundle by Crestron. So you will see the education campus packages, uh, a lot of other packages, the transmitters and receiver combination packages, workplace technology solutions. So all these packages, all these bundled solutions, if you're looking for them, you have to get into the interfacing and switching system and look under the packet solutions. If you're looking for a video conferencing package, then you have to go in the video conferencing system and look for a video conferencing package. So, so that's for the packet solution. Now I'm gonna show you how uh, the, the AV over IP solution uh, designing works. So basically, you have to choose encoders and decoders. So, so the number of uh, the number of sources you have and number of destinations. The so sources are your laptops, your video conferencing, your streaming devices, desktop, and your uh, destinations are your projector screens, again, video conferencing, or your LED displays. So you need equal number of encoders and decoders. So it's pretty simple and easy to design. So let's say I want to do a Crestron, I hit find products. And now you can choose uh, from encoders and decoders. So that's all you have to do if you choose each and click add to bomb, these will be added in your design. But I'm going, I'm probably going to show you a more interesting uh, uh, system, which is basically an HD based system and which is the most popular in the meeting room as well. By the way, same thing is true for AVB. We do have BIAMP AVB encoders and decoders available in the in the system. So as you could see, we are suggesting the quantity based on the number of inputs which you have. So the quantities of the decoders as well as the encoders are suggested here. So one of the feedback which we have got from our users is that from these encoders and decoders, including the AV or IP and AVB, there is a possibility to control because these have control ports as well. So under the control section, we'll be adding a way by which you will not have to separately add a control system. You could use the control ports in the encoders and decoders. So if you have that question, please be noted that it's already being taken care of. All right, so I'm gonna go with the HD base T system. Now HD base T system is basically, you'll have a transmitter and a receiver based system extended over CAT 5E or, or, or CAT 6, but it will not be connected over a network. It will not be connected over a switch. It will be a direct point-to-point -point connection. Uh, if you don't know about this, this is, a, this is a great tool to learn for this. So let's say if you don't know what HD base T is, you can just click on learn more and it will take you to the HD base T site. And same is true for AV over IP and AVB as well. All right, so I select HD base T, then I have to choose from a standard switcher or a matrix switcher or a configurable matrix switcher. So a standard switcher, as many of you would already know, gives you just one output, multiple inputs and one outputs. Matrix, multiple ins, multiple outs. Configurable matrix is basically, it's, uh, it's not a fixed IO. So you can configure your ins and out based by putting in cards in the chassis. So if you have a lot of inputs and outputs in your design, you should go with configurable matrix. If you have multiple inputs and multiple outputs, but not a lot of them, then go for a matrix. And then if you just have a single output, go for a standard switcher. So I'm gonna do a matrix switcher because I have multiple ins and multiple outs. Then these are the brands that you could choose from. We pretty much have all the popular ones in here. So I'm then gonna do a Crestron. And uh, I will do a transmitter and receiver both. Now, this is something very unique which we have for all these manufacturers. So you don't actually have to choose the transmitter and receiver. So as a designer, you know how many HDMI inputs you have on the table, how many HDMI uh, or VGA inputs you have uh, for which you need to extend 
your HD-based network. So, so we basically have a combination available for all uh, different types of manufacturers. So let's say under Crestron, uh, in the under table transmitters, these are the combinations which are available in Crestron. A transmitter with two HDMI, zero VGA, two HDMI, one VGA, one HDMI, zero VGA. So these are all the combinations which are available in Crestron. Similarly for wall plate, you will see uh, all the combinations available in Crestron. If you will do Extron, similarly you will see there we have all the different type of transmitters with different combinations available in under table wall plate and even in floor box. So whichever manufacturers have all different, kind, different kinds of uh, transmitters, we have that covered. So this is something which even the manufacturers also don't have on their platform or on their website. So this is something we have hard coded for each of these popular manufacturers. So, so I have chosen four laptops and one desktop. So I will do uh, one HDMI, one transmitter with two HDMI and one transmitter with two HDMI and one VGA port. So all my laptops will go on the VGA and I'll have a spare. All my laptop, sorry, will go on HDMI and I have, I'll have a spare VGA port. So that's all I have to do. And then I could, uh, then I need one more transmitter and I'll tell you why I need that. I'll tell you in, in a little bit. So I, I select one more HDMI transmitter over HDBASD. Then I have to choose the receivers. So I have basically three types of devices. So I have two screens and one, uh, one projector. So I would put three receivers in here. Once you've done that, now you have to tell the system the connectivity pattern. So I don't know how many of you already know this, but many a times in order to save the HD base T ports in a design, a lot of people use a combination of transmitter receiver connected on the HDMI input of the switcher and uh, the transmitter and the receiver are connected over HD base T. So this basically saves an HD based T port on the switcher, and you could connect via HDMI at the same point of time, you could extend using the transmitters and receiver. This is a, 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 a this is kind of a cheap cord uh, to save some money. So we have that covered as well. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can just select the normal way, transmitter, switcher, and receiver. But here I would like to save a port, uh, an output H, uh, HD based T port. So I will choose, transmitter directly to the switcher and then transmitter and receiver so so why i have chosen one extra transmitter here is because the switcher which i'm going to choose does not have enough hd based d output ports and i'll show you how so the first things uh, based on your combination which you have chosen it will tell you which transmitters you can choose so uh, you will get all the options which are available uh, in those combinations and it will also give you the quantity. So I'll select from this lot and one from this lot and I need one more from here. Then I need three uh, receivers. So these are my options under receivers. Uh, so I will probably choose, just choose any one of them. Once I have chosen uh, my transmitters and receivers, now it is time to choose a switcher. So uh, now the system will calculate based on the devices you have chosen already, the video devices, including your laptops, video conferencing, your screens, project or everything, it will, and your transmitters and receivers. It will tell you you need four HDMI in, one HDMI out, three HD base T input, and three HD base T output ports. And based on that, it will try and fetch the nearest ones for you. Now, the challenge with Crestron is it does not have more than two HD base T output ports. So that's why I have chosen this particular combination so that I could save 
a HD based keyboard and connect one of the outputs via HDMI. You will see how it's done in the drawing. Apart from that, if you uh, would like to have your own specifications, you're not happy with the specifications given by the algorithms, you could put in your own specifications in terms of HDMI inputs, HD base T inputs, HDMI outputs, and all HD base T outputs. So that flexibility is there. But then it's if you do that, we are not sure that everything will be connected in the right way in your drawing. Because for us, this is what we need. We need four HDMI ins, one HDMI out, three HD base DNS. So let's let's see how it uh, how it connects in the drawing. So I select the DMPS 3 4K 250C. And it gives me a warning that it has less ports as we need, but I have chosen uh, a way to uh, save on my port so I can ignore this message. And uh, I'll probably choose, yeah. I'll choose this one. And hit that to bar. Now it's going to ask you for if you need a distribution amplifier, if you further want to uh, put similar content on multiple displays, but I don't need to do that. So I'll say no to the, uh, the distribution amplifier. All right, so the video section is now complete. Now we get on to the audio side. Uh, audio side, you will see we have pretty much, uh, we have all the things which are pretty simple uh, and easy to use in terms of all the devices that you have in a meeting room. So microphones, wireless microphone speakers, amplifiers, and DSP. So let's quickly start with the microphones. So uh, you have multiple options, standalone microphones. Under standalone microphones, you'll see boundary mics, cruise neck, ceiling, beamforming mics. Under integrated conference system, you have an option to choose analog or digital conference system. And you have VC correct microphones if you would like to go just with the microphones which comes with the vc core and you would also have an option to say not required if you don't need microphones in your system having said that uh, something which comes to my mind is a lot of people have asked that if they don't need a switching system in there so that's where we're working your voices have been heard that's where we're working by which you can bypass the switching and interfa interfacing system so that you don't have to every time select a switcher to move on to complete your design. So audio, uh, so under standalone microphones. So it is all the option which you will see, which comes after your selections are pretty dynamic and are based on the different, uh, uh, different kinds of specifications available in different brands. So let's say I want a boundary mic, which is stable embedded and has a cardioid polar pattern. So this combination is only available in these two brands in our database. So that's why you just see two options. So if you similarly, if you do another pattern, it will give you less a number of options because this combination is pretty unique. So all the brand options which you which you'll get in the microphone section are pretty unique. So let's go for a beam forming microphone go for a ceiling tile microphone. And uh, you'll see all the popular ones are in here. So I will add sure. Now, as soon as I do sure, it will give me a nice uh, reminder that I need to choose a microphone with Dante technology or AES 67 standard because the sure mic is compatible only with these two technologies. So, uh, so all that intelligence is built in. I'll choose an MXA910. It gives me a recommended quantity. If I want to change that recommended quantity, I can put in my own quantity in here as well. Click on add to bomb. Then uh, if you need wireless microphones, uh, it will give you nice wireless sets which you could have in your design. So I'm going to quickly go and select wireless microphones. Add to bomb. Now comes the speaker section. Uh, speaker section is pretty unique. 
So in the meeting room, we only have wall mount and ceiling speakers. Uh, but if you will go in other templates like uh, auditorium or house of worship or a town hall cafeteria, you will have line arrays, point sources, and portable speakers there as well. So I'll probably do both here. And uh, now it's asking me for a speaker coverage. So if you don't know what it means, so you can hover on the tooltip and we'll show you what exactly it means. So what's the kind of coverage that you're looking for? I'm gonna go maximum coverage, which is H2 center. So the, the higher you go, the more number of speakers you, you're gonna need in a design. If you need a mix and minus system, I'd say no. Uh, then I need to tell the system about the background noise level. If you, if you know exactly what's uh, the value you can put your own value. Otherwise, you can just go by these selections. You want to put in a headroom, and then it's going to ask you a, a small question about the room acoustics. So, if you choose a glass and a reflective material, or a marble or a tile flooring, it will give you an option to choose beam steering speakers. It's a small thing which is built into the system, and if you say yes, it will show you the beam steering options but I'm not gonna use the beam steering. So I go for a 170 volt system. Now, uh, these are all the brands which I get to choose from. So I hit Tenoy and hit find products. So uh, there are hundreds of speakers in our database in Tenoy. So it's searching for them at the moment. That's why uh, it takes a bit of time to pull it up but uh, where the number of speakers are less, it will, it will uh, show you a bit earlier. So just uh, thank you for your patience. It's gonna pull up just in a second. All right, so I do have my speakers now. Again, in speakers, I have an option to filter out as per the wattage which I need. So if I hit 25 to 50 watt, watts, it's gonna fetch uh, the speakers under the 25 and 50 watt range in the specifications which are here. So I'm gonna select CBS4. It's showing me the recommended quantity as eight. If you wanna change the quantity, you can put in your own quantity here. So you have that flexibility. Same is true for wall mount speakers. It's showing a recommended quantity in a meeting room for two. If you want more, you can change it. Hit H bomb. Now it comes to the amplifier section. Now the amplifier section, you say yes. And uh, so you have two types of amplifiers. You can have a mixer amplifier or a power amplifier. If you will choose a mixer amplifier, please remember that you will have an option to skip the DSP section. But if you choose the power amplifier right now, we don't have an option to skip the DSP section, but we are working on a way by which you can skip the DSP section anyways. So the next is, uh, do you need an amplifier with built-in DSP? I'd say no. Uh, do I need an audio network? No, but if you need, if you go with yes in an amplifier with built-in DSP, you will get more options in audio network and you will get more products uh, with, uh, with network amplifier. But if you say no to built-in DSP, then there'll be very few uh, amplifiers which will come up with network options. So please keep that in mind. Okay, I don't need a network, so I will go for a QSC amplifier and I say find products. So it will pull up the QSC. It's, it's doing all the calculations for you at the back end. As you will see, it's telling you the, the tapping required, the power required in the ceiling speaker and the power required and the tapping in the wall mount speaker as well. So all the calculations are being done for you. So let's select the amplifier. It will tell you the, the wattage required and how many speakers you can put on each amplifier. Again, if you don't like the recommendation, there is an option to choose your own amplifier specifications. So let's say uh, if you wanna change that, you can, you want two amplifiers, and then you can put in your own specification. You can put in your brand, you can put in the mode, low impedance, 170 volt, the number of channels, wattage per channel, and the quantity which you need. So how many different type of amplifiers is basically the, uh, the different types of amplifiers you have. Then you could, which means there is amplifier one and amplifier two, but there could be uh, one, two, three, four, or five quantity of each. 
So just keep that in mind if you're, you're going to use your own specification. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use my own specification. So I have to choose one from here, and then I have to choose one from here for my ceiling speakers. And then I hit add to bomb. So my uh, so the last section is the DSP section. I hit yes. And then, uh, so we have two types of DSPs, which are basically open and closed DSPs. So open architecture are basically where you can configure the, the processing objects, like, you know, in, in BIAMP, in BSS, QSC, metrics, Atlas IDs, uh, DSPs. And the closed ones are where you cannot, uh, it's a fixed architecture and you cannot change the processing objects in the DSP. So I'm gonna go for an open architecture DSP. Now, as I do that, it's only giving me two options, which is Dante and QLAN. This is why, because I have chosen beamforming microphones, which work only on Dante or QLAN compatible AES67. If I had analog microphones, it would have given me options for AVB or non-networkable DSPs as well. So keep that in mind. So I say yes to Dante, I say yes to VoIP, I say yes to ports, I say yes to GPIO. Uh, and then I, now it's saying you would have to say yes to soft, uh, to USB audio because you have a software codec option. So that intelligence is built in. It will automatically give you a DSP with built in USB audio. So wall controllers, I'd say, okay, I need a wall controller. You choose wall controllers. I need two of them. I need a dialer. No, I don't need a dialer. And then again, the, the brand options which you see here are dynamic based on your preferences beginning from here. So that's, so if in some places you will see less a number of brands, does not mean that we don't have all the product. It means that only these two brands have the specifications which you need, which you have opted for. Say yes for buy-in, and then I hit find products. So it will again do the calculation, tell me I need a 24 cross three DSP with AC and Dante for JPIO ports, VoIP and ports as well. And again, if you wanna change uh, the specification here, you have the flexibility to put in your own specification here and search for the product. You just have to put in the total number of ports which you need. That flexibility is here in the DSP section as well. So I'm gonna select uh, oh, Dante VT to see the port A. Uh, now I need to select a few more because I need 24 inputs. So I probably need two of these. And I hit add to bomb. It's gonna ask me to choose wall controllers. I hit add to bomb. That's it. Now my audio section is also complete. Now moving on to the control section. Do I need a control system? Uh, you can totally skip this section if you don't need a control system. If you, if you go for a QSC processor, it has control system built in. So uh, you can say no to this. But I'm gonna say yes. And how would you like to control? I would need a touch panel. I could do a mobile, devi uh, mobile device as well. I need a wired touch panel. I need a 10.1 inch. Do I need a control keypad? Uh, if you want control keypad for some uh, control, you can say yes and we'll give you control keypad options. Here I'd say no. Now uh, here, I would need to tell the system all the devices which I have in my BOM, how are they going to be controlled by the control processor so that I can calculate the required ports of the control processor. So I say yes, or I say uh, RX-282 for LED, LCD, projector, projector screen probably on relay. Let's put everything on RX-282. Let's put DSP on LAN. I don't have a lightning device. We don't give an option for lighting device uh, because uh, we are not yet a lighting system design. But if you have a lighting system in your meeting room, you could control, you could put that in, in, your, in the drawings in the bill of materials. So I say no to there. I have a streaming device, which is an Apple TV, so I'll say I, I could control that in IR. Then I choose AMX, hit find products. Again, so it will, it will tell you what exactly the number of ports that you need. Again, you have the flexibility to put in your own ports. 
if you don't want to go with the recommendation. So that flexibility is pretty much everywhere in the platform. So I say yes uh, to NX3200 at to bomb. Now uh, it's going to show me the compatible touch panels from the same brand. So it will it, it will not work in a way that you choose uh, a processor from AMX and then you can add a touch panel from Greston. That's not like how it works. So I'll add it. AMX MXD1001 with add to bomb. Room scheduling system. Okay, I can put in a room scheduling system as well. So it'll give you all the options available in AMX. You have to turn the quantity, click add to bomb. Cable cubbies. Uh, so we don't have to put a lot of emphasis on passive devices such as cable cubbies, uh, cables, and mounts. Uh, we do have some cable cubbies in our system. Uh, do you need retractors? I'd say yes. So we don't. We only have cable cubbies from Extron and Kramer. We're probably going to put from Crestron and AMX as well. But it's just you could take them as a reference if you'd like to add some. But apart from that, cables and mounts you will have to add in your bomb yourself because those are the passive components which actually don't reflect in the drawings as well. Click on add to bomb. I need rack, okay, I say yes. I need an LFID rack, I hit find products. Based on the number of products that you have and the RUs of all the products, the rack units, it will tell you how many rack units you need. So 20 rack units I need. If you wish to put in your own rack units, let's say I want a 32 you, you could do that and it will fetch all the products of 32 rack units. Now there is a subtype which you could select for the rack. So you know it's it, it will basically fetch all the products in those count combinations and does not seem like does not have 32u in uh, all of these but whichever will be available uh, you could put in the filter here so i choose let's choose 20 on the so that's what we need Okay, so now once you've added all the products uh, in the rack section, you get the button to hit generate bill of materials. So move on to your final section. Please make sure that you hit generate bill of material. All right, so now uh, you will see all your sections are fully complete and they will be marked complete in the subsections as well as on the tabs and you have success, successfully completed your design. So now is the time to actually get your documentation done. So all you have to do is click on generate design and you will see that at the back end our AI based algorithms will create a unique uh, set of drawings and documents for you because every time you have the ability to create a new design with different set of products. So that intelligence in terms of feeding the data to our algorithms, our AI algorithms has been done by us. So all the possible permutations and combinations have been taken care of uh, by using machine learning and artificial intelligence. So bill of materials. So starting with bill of material, it is the same which you saw uh, earlier here you have the flexibility to add in Excel or PDF and then you also have the ability to edit uh, the bill of material now uh, some people so, so you've got a feedback a lot of people are getting confused by in editing the bill of material so whatever editing you do in this bill of material uh, let's say you add a new product uh, Say you add something to my speaker in here. Now, if you've added something outside of the questionnaire in here, it will not show up in the drawing because our drawings and documents are generated based on the questionnaire. So you have so for that purpose, you have to use our add your own bomb method. 
but uh, if you just want to add certain items like cables, uh, mounts, yes, you can add them here. Obviously, they would not need to be shown in the drawings, but that is the flexibility. But if you add an active item like a DSP, a speaker, an amplifier in this section, it will not show up in the drawing. So please remember that. So the next time you go in this page, you will see there is an option now to view bomb and to view uh, edited bomb. So if you'll go under view bomb, it will show you the original design generated by answering the questionnaire. Please remember that. It will always show you the, the, uh, the default design. But if you go uh, under edited bomb, it will show you the, uh, the bomb which you edited and made, made the changes. So that is something. So you'd see the Tanoi speaker, which I added, is available in the edited bomb, not in the original bomb. So please always remember that. Okay, all right, so that's for the bill of material. Now, line schematics. I'm sure many of you have already seen the line schematics, how they are generated. I'm gonna show you uh, how I planned my entire system in my head and how exactly it turned out in, in the drawing. So you will see that I used a way by which I could add a transmitter and receiver connected on an HDMI output so that I could save on an R, uh, a HD base T port because this switcher has just got two HD base T outputs. So there you go. I've got everything connected. I have my four laptops are connected. I have got my USB IO bridge connected to the laptop via USB connection. I have got my USB camera connected. I, my USB IO bridge is connected to my DSP as well. Uh, my VC is connected. All of my projector is connected. All my, both my streams are connected. Uh, my, uh, my beam forming mics are connected over a Dante network. Both my DSPs are connected over a Dante network. Both my amplifiers are connected. Uh, all my speakers are connected on the channels which I actually wanted them to be connected. And my microphones are connected. So this, so if you plan the things right in the questionnaire, and it's just a matter of getting used to the questionnaire. You know, every time you will get a design which is asked for you. Again, uh, no need to tell you we have our own drawing editing tool which basically allows you to get inside and uh, do the editing and make changes and convert to other formats. Uh, we are going to do a separate webinar on how do we do editing inside our drawing tool. So that's a different webinar and that's totally, totally possible. At the same point of time, you also get uh, the single floor diagrams as well. Uh, rack layouts are here as well. Then we also have cable schedule. Uh, we're working on a way based on the feedback to uh, put in a way by which you can customize the cable schedule and put in your own uh, cable uh, labels in here and add more columns. So that's one feedback we're working on. Uh, we have a ceiling speaker layout. Again, uh, this, this is based on the number of uh, the, the coverage angle, the speaker you've chosen, and the coverage pattern you've chosen. If you want to download this, you can download this in a PDF format and it, it will, uh, it, it's ready for you to be viewed in PDF. And we also get a scope of work as well. So since you're following a questionnaire, uh, we can write this scope of work automatically. It will, it will tell you all the products which you have, all the technologies which you have used, like HDBST, Dante, uh, it's again completely editable. It will tell you what's the speaker tapping which you're gonna need, uh, what's the amplifier voltage which you're gonna need. So it's pretty detailed in that, and it's totally editable. And you can download this from this button as well. And again, proposal is another new topic. There is a complete revamp of proposal happening by end of August. We'll probably do a new webinar where you will see a complete revamp in our proposal section. Uh, to know what those changes are, you can go on our website and look at our public roadmap, 
which is basically uh, will give you an idea of what we are doing uh, to make the changes. So here you can see by 30th of August, all the changes, all these 14, 15, 16 points, which is based on the feedback we have uh, received from all of you valuable customers. We are implementing all of that along with all a bunch of other things, including API integrations and all that stuff and improvements too. So that's the scope of work. So that's that basically uh, was the uh, complete questionnaire for uh, for a meeting room. Uh, if any one of you has any questions, you can unmute your microphone and ask right now. I can I can take questions for five minutes before I move on to the next section. So Gene Wells asks, what about point-to-point HD-based -point transmitter and receiver without any matrix? That's a good question. That is where I said that uh, we are working on a way by which you could just select a transmitter and receiver combination and not needing a matrix switcher in between. Yes, we have heard that feedback and we are implementing it and it should, it should come in a couple, uh, couple of weeks time. Uh, Atkins Fleming is asking if you change your questionnaire and it changes the generated bomb, will it update your edited bomb as well? No, it will not update. It will not change your edited bomb. So your edited bomb uh, will re will remain the same. So that is that's a good feedback. Actually, we should be able to do that. So I'm going to note that as a feedback. Oh, the edited bomb should also change. How do you pick a different, uh, and then Gene Well is asking, how do you pick a different resolution? Most of the screens you have in the inventory are 16 is to nine and 16 is to 10. What is what, which is what most of the projectors have a standardized resolution. Okay, so I, I think we do have screens of 16 is to nine and 16 is to 10 both in our database. We would probably look into this and put in a question by which you can put, or maybe a filter by which you can uh, select a 16 is to nine or a 16 is to 10 screen. Okay, so those are the questions so far. And um, you can probably move on and complete the webinar. Uh, so Atkins Fleming is asking, do you, did you mention there is a different questionnaire template for different room types or is it just one standard questionnaire? No, uh, the, it is not a standard questionnaire. So for different templates, based on the requirements, there are uh, different questions. So in a, in a town hall cafeteria, yes, a lot of things will be same, but based on the requirements in the type of room, there'll be a certain number of changes, especially in the audio side in house of worship and auditorium templates. So let me just quickly take you to uh, a huddle room design and we have to do the classroom as well. Classroom is pretty, pretty much a similar to answer your question. So I'll take rest of the questions uh, once I complete the huddle room and the classroom. So webinar, huddle room, great design, start, uh, no, I don't want to cancel it. Sorry, start. Okay, so I have a small huddle room. Uh, small size, inches. I continue. How many displays? So obviously, I need a display. I tell first uh, general viewing, 4K, uh, AL, LG. So it's pretty much the same like the the meeting room. So it says 65 inches. Okay, that should be fine. I hit add products. 
Now it's going to ask me for Huddle Room. Uh, it will give you options for Huddle Room products. So, uh, do you need a Huddle Room device which has a built-in speaker inside your LED display, or you need a built-in speaker inside the Huddle device? So you have both the options. You say yes to LED. It will give you options which uh, just have uh, which uh, the the Huddle device it does not have a speaker built-in. Do you require a built-in wireless presentation in your Huddle Room device? So there are some products like Crestron Mercury, which have got a wireless presentation also built in along with the USB audio and the speaker and the microphone built in. So uh, that's what, uh, so if you need that kind of product, you say yes. If you don't need that, you could say no, and then you'll get more options. So Biam, AMX, Logitech, all are here. So this will give you uh, options of built in speakers in the LED. So if I do yes, say I'm products, and you give me the Biam, Devio, all the Biam, Devio options. Uh, if I go built-in speakers in Huddle device, uh, these are the brands which support that. So you'll see AMX, uh, AVC, Ascendo system is in here. Uh, a lot of Logitech products are also in here, uh, which have got a built-in microphone and a uh, speaker in here. And in Vadio also you have got multiple options along with the speakers built in and the microphone packages as well. So all the huddle room devices here which you'll see either uh, which you choose with built-in speakers in, in LED or inside the huddle device. Microphone is always that is something which comes along with the huddle device. So let's choose one of this My product. We need a room scheduling. Okay, let's do a room scheduling and products. Like yes, that's mom. So it's pretty simple, easy to use. Huddle room gives you a lot of options for a small huddle room. Uh, it will also do the drawings and documents for you in the similar way it did for uh, the meeting room. So here you will see your nice huddle room schematic also here with your USB camera connected to your bring your own device laptop your screen and the huddle device, which has got a speaker built in. So that's huddle room is pretty plain and simple, easy to use. So let's go to the classroom. Now the question was that uh, are all the questions same in all the templates? No, uh, the templates do have some variations based on the applications. So let's view a web in, uh, let's view a classroom template. So obviously you can go back and edit uh, a template so I will not start a new design I'll just tell you what are the differences in a classroom template so you have room dimensions which are pretty much the same uh, that number of video sources are the same video is also pretty much similar uh, is it's actually almost very same to a meeting room uh, like I said, you could have a streaming and recording and an annotation system. One thing which is missing here right now, we, we have got the feedback is, is the ability to add interactive whiteboards and interactive screens. So that is something which we are working on and it should be made live in a month or so. So the major change in the, uh, the classroom section is, is that you get to choose two separate types of microphones. So you can choose a trainer's microphone and you can choose student's microphones. So that's the only change which you have in the classroom template. And then uh, the, the room, the, depending on the room sizes and all, it will calculate uh, the specifications of speakers and the, the quantity of the speakers, the wattage required for the amplifiers. That works dynamically based on the requirements and based on the on the OVIXA standards and guidelines. So you will see it's, it's pretty much everything is the same in these three uh, templates. You do generate design and it will uh, do all the drawings and documents for you which you saw earlier. Okay.
All right, so this is you see the line semantics are here. It's pretty much the same, except it will have more microphones for speak for trainers and uh, students both. So yeah, so that's it'll work in a similar way, but uh, the questionnaire is different in in template for video wall, the template for town hall and cafeteria. It's very different for uh, for your uh, auditorium and house of worship and lounge bars and retail as well. So meeting room, huddle room, classroom are pretty much the same, and it's also very different in networked rooms as well. Okay, so now we are now going to take some questions and at the same point of time, I'm going to do a launch a poll. Please, uh, you can put in your questions as well uh, and also answer the poll which we have. So I'm going to take the questions which we have in the chat window. Uh, do you offer educational discount for universities? Yes, we do offer educational discount for universities. Mike uh, asked this question. What about hybrid solutions, HD based T and AV over IP? So that is something which we don't have yet, but uh, if you give us an option, uh, give us an idea, what do you, uh, what kind of solutions are there, we can probably modify our algorithm. So Daniel Moran, Moran asked this question. So Brad Caldwell asked, the model numbers of Crestron encoders and decoders appear to be inaccurate. Okay, so that is something which we will uh, check it out. But as I said, we are tying up with AVIQ. So all those things, all those issues, which you probably see right now are gonna go away. On Crestron, so Brad again, on Crestron, how do you select card-based encoders and decoders and the frame unit? So Brad, I remember you you asked this question uh, at Infocom as well, and this is something we have, uh, we are in process of Im implementing. So we are putting in a way by which you can, uh, which you can select chassis-based encoder and decoder. So it should be live in a week's time. So Strip Myers is asking, what happens if you do not need a transmitter because the source is it the rack with the switcher? So you can, like I said, there will be a way by which you should be able to, uh, uh, you should be able to skip the switcher section or just select transmitters and receiver combination or just the transmitter in there. Brad again, can you select to do a HD based T extension to a VoIP encoder to allow HDMI and VGA to be extended to a VoIP system. Okay, this is something uh, a little typical. So Brad, probably I'll, I'll write you an email and we can probably have a call one on one and I can answer all these questions of yours. Uh, uh, on, a, on a one on one call. Again, please show how you modify the drawing to include those added items. Yes, we will do a webinar and I, I we will tell you how to modify the drawings. Uh, can you duplicate a prior project and make quantity modification instead of starting from scratch? Yes, you can. So that is something which is totally possible. Uh, let me show you how that works. Uh, so, if you have, let's say I did a design, uh, this is my meeting room design. So you go to more and you have an option to do replicate design. So if you do a replicate design, you can uh, start a new design uh, and uh, you can put it in any new project which you have. Just hit replicate and this design will now be copied in your new project like here. So that's, that's pretty simple and easy to use, Brad. I hope you get you got that. Uh, Gabe is asking, hey guys, can't, I can't stay on, but really like the webinar. The only thing I can ask for is if I can, can stay closer to time. Unfortunately, I have to drop off. 
I'm sorry, uh, Gabe, we, we uh, will send you a recording of this, but there are so many things which you have to cover. We try and keep it crisp, but thank you so much. I'm not here anyway. So, Guy Butcherati asks, do you plan to add a template for yachts? Uh, not as of now, but it will be pretty similar to a lounge bar kind of a thing, maybe. So yes, maybe you could write to us, guy. If you're if you are there, you can uh, you could write to write to us, write to me at vibs v i b s at x ten a v dot com or at support at x ten a v dot com and give me an idea of how a yacht template should be. If you could do that, because uh, in our roadmap, if you'll see we have a public address system, hotels divisible rooms, residential, and digital signage. So these are the templates which our team are working on right now. So uh, these are the things which you could uh, basically, uh, you'll see it coming up by January the 30th. And some of these will probably come earlier. By uh, the, the plan is to complete all of these by January the 30th. Similarly, you will see a lot of things which you keep sending us. We keep adding them uh, in the list of our improvements. So like uh, option to get, skip DSP and switcher sections in different templates. Yes, it's gonna come by August 30th. Use a specific custom products and owner furnished equipments. Yes, we are working on that way. Uh, so Brad, if you're online, uh, option to select taxi based encoder decoder in AV or IP system. This was your question uh, again today. So we are already working on that. New beam forming microphone from Biamp. Uh, so this is already done. So you will see all the new Biamp parlay microphones added into the system. Addition, uh, addition of wireless microphone combination packages. This is being done. Option of auxiliary mic. So yeah, all these points you're working on. There's a huge list, but we're working very fast on all of these. Uh, there is something in add your own bomb, which is probably gonna blow your mind. We're gonna do an announcement very soon. Right now, a lot of products that you add uh, from your own bomb don't show up in the drawing, but we have now devised a way by which we can crowdsource the IO information and any product in the world you could add directly uh, just once while you are uh, adding your bomb and it will always show up in the drawing. And it will also be saved in your database so next time you don't have to add it again. So that is that's gonna be something huge, so I'm gonna not tell you a, a lot about it right now, but that is something that you're working on. We're working on API integration with Q360, AVIQ, I told you already, uh, uh, is, is gonna go live in the next couple of weeks. So you will see a lot more products showing up on our platform once that is done. QuickBooks, Salesforce, our teams are working day and night to make sure that we have all the ABI integrations for all of this. So Mike is asking, can labor costs and hours be estimated. Yes, uh, we're gonna do, we are doing a complete revise of our proposals section. You will see all of this coming in here very soon by August 30th. This is based on all the feedback in the last month and a half which we have got and uh, you will be amazed to see. We'll do a special webinar for our proposals uh, very soon. So you'll see uh, things like you know, ability to do advanced settings that will enable users to make custom templates, uh, ability to change uh, labor costs as per NSCA standards, do custom background images and company logos and save them as a template, uh, add additional sections like optional items, uh, SLA section, add cumulative labor costs, NSCA labor hour standards, fetching tax rates from corresponding US states so that you don't have to enter this, the taxes yourself. It will do an API and will automatically fetch the tax rates. So all those things are there on our, on our roadmap. And one of the most important things is the ability to add, to upload an Excel and CSV file to make a bomb. So right now you have to search and add products, but very soon you will have the ability to upload your Excel sheet obviously in, in the format which we need, but that will save a lot of time for you. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it. Uh, we went over 
time again. I'm sorry about that. I really appreciate all of you taking out time and uh, showing up for the webinar. Uh, please keep sending us the feedback. Please keep uh, using the product. You can contact us under the chat window. Obviously, we are pretty responsive on this. If you have experienced this, you can write to us at support at xnav.com or you can write to me at vibs at xnav.com. We are always there available for you. All right, so I'm gonna end this webinar. If there are no more questions, please, if there are any, please do let me know. What's the best contact for sales support? So all the sales Atkins is right now being handled by myself and Sahil. So you can, uh send us an email at this email id which i'm typing in right now and uh, you can also send to sahil as well so both of us are looking after sales so sahil is in the west coast so he's in the west coast time zone the pacific time zone i'm in the east coast so i'm in the east coast time zone whichever time zone suits you uh please let us know Okay, so if there are no more questions, uh, I'm going to end this webinar. Thank you again, guys, for joining in, and uh, I wish you a, a good day and good luck, and I will see you again in the next webinar, which will be on the other templates uh, which we have in our system. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys, and uh, have a good day.